Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Fraunhofer with Roland Yanka, who's going to talk today about substrate noise coupling. So Roland, what is substrate noise coupling and why has it suddenly become a problem? Substrate noise coupling is the injection of noise which of pulses which come into the pads of your design of your IC and go through the substrate onto sensitive analog parts of your design. And you do have to care about this since with upcoming technologies it tends to integrate different parts of the design onto the same chip with different sensitivity. So power management ICs are an example for that where you integrate different parts, analog, digital, um, power parts on the same die with um, advanced technologies and these tend to be sensitive to substrate noise coupling. And so we've been thinking about a lot of the noise problems, particularly as we get down into the most advanced nodes, but with packaging, with some of the new markets that are cropping up, things like um, uh, automotive, for example, these become much bigger issues than they have been in the past, right? Yeah, sure. Um, nowadays, everything has to be packed in denser um, packages, so it tends to integrate different technologies into one die and there are upcoming new technologies which allow you to do so. Those are those uh, SOI technologies, semi, um, silicon on insulator uh, or BCD technologies. These are new options for you to design different parts onto the same die and these are possibilities that you have but also you need to take care of those uh, coupling via the substrate and you need to have tools in order to verify that there is no um, performance degradation due to this dense integration onto one chip. And if you're thinking about something like an autonomous vehicle, for example, and you start having this degradation, this affects reliability, which is basically quality over time, right? Right. Degradation is another very important part that you need to care about in the future. Um, there are upcoming technologies, the latest technologies, um, which are required for you in order to bring the compute power into the cars in the future. If you want to realize autonomous driving functions, you, need, you have a lot of compute power to integrate into the cars. Um, on the other hand, um, you want to save power for these chips, for these uh, applications in order to bring them into the um, autonomous vehicles. But you have to ensure that the latest technologies which are capable of doing so last for the intended 10 or 20 years for those uh, automotive applications. And this is something which you need to verify upfront in your design stage. So why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. There, there are new technologies which allow you to integrate even new applications into uh, your chips. Uh, imagine this is the interface, you have your um, interconnect layers above, then you have the active devices here, then you might have different welds in between here, um, n welds, deep n welds, so different layers um, in the substrate, but then there might be also buried oxide layers and trenches here and you need to have a model for the interaction of the devices in this island to devices on a different island and you know that there is a capacitive coupling or at these wells there might be also diode coupling here but how can you verify that these how large the, the interaction between those two devices is via those um, oxide layers. And this is something where you could explore different isolation schemes and you needed to have a tool at hand to verify different approaches and see what works out best for you. And this is um, where there are solutions needed in the in the commercial design environments to be integrated.
So how do you deal with this? I mean, it's a big problem. It's coming ahead for a lot of different markets. What's the solution? Um, what, do you, what you need is a solution which is easily applicable to your design environment, which gives you a very quick answer on what is the result of a different isolation scheme with multiple trenches, for instance, and grounding of the um, area in between. So what you need is a quick solution for the um, interaction between an aggressor and a victim and an estimate of the um, coupling between those two. And this is, there's one need to have this in the AC domain, but also you could ask what is the interaction and for a transient simulation. So even this question needs to be answered. What have people been doing up until now? How have they been solving these problems? Well, usually they have handy solutions. They play around with different schemes, but then they need to manufacture it and measure whether it works or not. Or they have handy computations uh, with, with um, some their, with their own um, pen and paper. What we offer here is to have a solution that is capable of doing this automatically just in, their, in your design environment. And if you don't do this, what's the fallout? What's the potential problem that you run into? Interaction between the aggressor and the victim could definitely um, affect the performance of your overall circuit. If you have sensitive analog parts in your design, they might be affected so that the performance is lost, so that there are pulses coming from the pads to the analog parts and affect the performance of your analog uh, circuit then. And does it degrade over time? I mean, is it all at once or does it degrade over time to the point where it's no longer usable? This is something which is an instant effect. Um, as, as soon as the pulse comes in and flows over the substrate and affects the um, analog parts, the sensitive parts of your design. So it's an instant effect. It does not accumulate over time as far as we know. So one of the problems as we get into very complex and, and new areas is that you have a lot of different blocks that may come on at different times. They may not always be in use. Sometimes they're in use uh, sporadically. And we've seen this with, with failures in uh, mobile phones, for example. In this case, you're dealing with potentially um, uh, industrial, automotive, uh, medical, uh, things that, that potentially are safety critical type of markets. Can you predict all this stuff ahead of time, that there will, there will be problems? Sure, this is exactly what the um, ambition of, these, of those solutions is. Um, we need to verify for sure that the solution is correct. Um, what we use here is a TCAT simulation tool as a reference, so this is the best way we can have as a golden reference, but um, offering a TCAT um, accuracy but with, with circuit level speed is an option that you're looking for today in the market. And this is something which uh, you would give, give you the ability at hand to play around with different isolation schemes and um, seek for the best solution in your design. You're talking uh, to a large extent about um, FDSOI here, uh, which is your, your structure. What does that bring to the table in these type of designs that you wouldn't get otherwise? Do you actually, are you able to use FDSOI to really insulate against the substrate noise? Um, FDSOI is one of the technologies which are come with a lot of advantages. So you're basically uh, uh, capable of tweaking whether you want to go for small energy uh, consumption or you want to go for speed. You can switch over from one scheme to the other on time in the field by uh, changing the, the back bias voltage. So this is a very flexible technology today which allows you to build up adaptive systems that can adapt to the um, situation at hand. How about BCD? What, what's the difference there? BCD is a different technology which uh, upcoming um, which integrates 
bipolar CMOS and DMOS. So they're again different technology, different um, devices that with demanding um, challenges that go into one chip and allow you to integrate different parts of your design, but are on the other hand um, sensitive to their interaction. So you need to verify again what is the interaction between the different parts of your design. So the goal here is to insulate where you can and then understand what the effects are that you have to account for that are not covered by that with those two technologies, right? Right. Um, you have the capabilities through those technologies and need to make sure that you do not suffer from uh, interactions that you didn't think of while designing. As we start building more complex systems in a package, and these technologies are put into a package in addition to other technologies because you can put any chip you want in there, any process. What happens in terms of the uh, analysis for that? Does that change significantly? Do you have to account for more things as it goes into a 2.5D uh, uh, or 3D or system and package? Even these integration schemes that are upcoming right now um, pose new um, challenges to the overall design. You need to co-design different chips. You need to incorporate the uh, interposer in your design. And this is something which um, gives more challenges to the design environment, to the tools that you're using here in terms of electrothermal interactions, in terms of um, substrate noise coupling, in terms, in, in terms of electromagnetic coupling. So even mechanical coupling is something you need to take care of. As we move into more safety critical markets with technology where it's really never been used before, what do we have to take into account? What's the best uh, practices we can do at this point that we have never done before in these markets? New markets that are upcoming and new applications, for instance, for autonomous driving, are really posing a lot of challenges for the designs. They, these applications can only be served by the latest technologies which have never been designed for automotive use conditions. So under these use conditions, environmental conditions, um, these circuits have to last for 10 or 20 years for the whole lifetime of the car. So there is a huge um, amount of new challenges that we need to verify upfront while designing your circuit. You don't want to um, or you don't want to break your car um, at 200 km per hour on the left lane. So you need to verify that this function is there for um, all application conditions, for all environmental conditions over the whole lifetime. And this is something you need to verify very, far, very um, much at the beginning, at the design time, when you start designing your chip. Within this new paradigm, who's responsible for the, creating the degradation model? There are a number of players in this field. So um, there are the foundries that are producing or manufacturing the technology who know about the capabilities of the technologies. Then there are for sure ADA, EDA vendors that are, have the interfaces to integrate degradation models. And there are the designers that need to, they need to make sure that their designs last for the specified lifetime. And this triangle, um, there is someone missing providing degradation models. And this is the missing link between those three, providing degradation models in the interfaces of the design environments for a given technology to the designer, to the IC designer, at his hands for him to verify that his design will last over the specified lifetime. Roland Yanka, thank you for a great explanation. You're welcome. Thanks.